Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews on the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater, or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes, and let's dive into the world of film and television together. On this episode, I am talking about the Academy Award-nominated picture, Best Picture, I think, and probably other awards as well, uh, the the next film in the, the catalog of films from Damien Chazelle, uh, this being Babylon, came out last year, 2022. It is written and directed by Damien Chazelle, which I believe all three of his films are. This movie has a stacked cast. Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, Gene Smart, Olivia Wilde, Diego Calva, and the one and only Flea. Uh, this is a movie that follows the rise and fall of multiple characters during an era of unbridled decadence in early Hollywood. Overall, I... This movie's crazy. So, in general, I'm very hit or miss with Damien Chazelle. I absolutely loved Whiplash. It was my favorite movie the year it came out. I think 20, was it 2015, 2016? Whenever that movie came out, absolutely loved it. It's, it's you know, one of, probably one of my all-time favorite movies, right? And then, his follow-up, La La Land, absolutely did not like uh was one of the you know just a movie that i really did not enjoy at all uh, i haven't revisited it maybe if i go through and rewatch his films maybe i'll have more appreciation for la la land but uh did not like it at all and when this movie started when i started watching babylon which i was looking forward to heard mixed reviews uh, obviously, it's it's gotten nominations, and I want to try and watch all of the movies that are nominated for Best Picture, and I believe this is one of them. Uh, but a movie I was looking forward to anyway, out of curiosity, to see kind of where I stand on Damien Chazelle movies. And when this movie started, I absolutely hated this movie. I hated this movie completely, and by the end... I loved it. So even within the runtime of this very long three hour and ten minute movie, uh, I had all of this the emotions that I have towards Damien Giselle films so far. Uh, where it started off, did not like it, and uh, ended up absolutely loving the movie by the end of it, which is kind of an insane ride to go on emotionally as a viewer. But also this movie in many ways is a wild ride in itself and that's probably why i enjoy it uh going on this ride with these people uh it it was it was well worth it by the end i felt actually reminded me a lot of boogie nights in a lot of ways kind of a mix of boogie nights and singing in the rain uh which you know is is kind of a wild combination of films but uh if you were to tell almost the singing in the rain story with the the cocaine-filled cocaine manic energy of Boogie Nights, uh, then I think you would have a good idea of what this movie is. But, you know, the, the movie, right, is, in many ways is about making movies, is about Hollywood in general, Hollywood from the point of silent films, and then as they evolved into talkies, into they evolved into using sound within their films you're seeing that evolution of hollywood hollywood itself is a character in this film along with many of the other people some of which are stars from the silent era and struggling to succeed in the new evolution of film others are up and coming some people behind the camera some people in front of the camera so it's it, it's definitely a great like L.A. Hollywood story, I would say, right? And definitely starts has that gritty, 
cocaine filled right take very much like boogie nights as boogie nights was a take on the porn industry in a lot of ways and the evolution of the porn industry from film to vhs uh this movie is is kind of that but in a, a bigger way i would almost say this is man they both great films <laughs> you know probably one of my favorite uh paul thomas anderson films and then this movie I don't know if I like this movie better than Whiplash, but definitely uh, right up there. Right up there, I would say. Different in many ways than Whiplash, but definitely has that epic scale, which I appreciate. Uh, and despite the kind of manic and chaotic nature of this film, especially the opening of this film, uh, it, it, it is something that I you know warmed up to as the runtime went on, right? But uh, definitely the beginning of this movie was a great way to induce a panic attack. If anybody's looking to have a panic attack, you're just sitting at home and maybe you're too calm and life is going too good. Maybe put on the first the first uh, part of this movie and uh, maybe you'll succeed at, at finding that panic within you. Uh, you know, it's the beginning of this film. Hated it. Uh, just literally stressed me out. And literally felt like I was going to have a panic attack watching this movie. Which is not... Usually that's something that I will encounter if I am knowingly taking an edible before a film. Which is something I enjoy doing. It adds to the experience of the film. That, you know, high-dosed edible could give you... Can induce that kind of panic attack. But it's more controlled. Because you know it's going to happen. This one was just a visceral feeling of just the manic. Just so many things going on so fast all the cuts are fast everything's going fast it's like holy it is like so much to take in especially watching this on my projector so i got like almost the movie theater experience watching this film and it was a lot i'm i'm telling you it was a lot and you get to see right it so it starts off very manic, very, and I, th I think it kind of keeps that pace in a lot of ways, maybe tones down a little bit, but definitely there's moments where this movie takes a breath, right? Allows you to, as the audience, to kind of recoup mentally. Uh, so I do enjoy that. And because it's able to take a breath here and there, I was able to enjoy the ride a lot more. And you get to see, you know, a lot of different characters as they get chewed up and spit out by Hollywood, which, you know, is uh, it's just like it's it's like very tragic in, in a lot of those ways. Right. Seeing how you also get to see how the times have changed and the art of film making changes, which is very interesting as well, especially if you're a fan of movies. Right. And uh, seeing how some people thrive. And some people just kind of crash and burn, right? It's it's one of those things, especially with the 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 pace and the chaos that seem to exist, at least in this film. It's like there's only so much time that could be sustained in any kind of successful way. Like it, it's always like the longer you're on that ride, the more likely it is that you're going to crash and burn. It is not something that somebody can ride out comfortably into the sunset with the manic nature and the insanity and chaos that that seem to have gone on. And there's one character definitely that you're out of the many characters, there's one character Manny that we spend a lot of time with and you care about. I care about seeing how his journey and seeing in many ways how, you know, it feels good to watch somebody succeed right to not necessarily follow a dream specifically as some other characters might be doing but just somebody that's just trying to survive in a lot of ways and finding success in his hustle in his just determination to make things possible um so manny is kind of that character at least for me that i was able to latch on to and he acted like a the only sane person in a lot of ways in this very insane movie right seemingly a good guy too right he but who gets swept up in the magic of what's possible in LA the thing the magic of movies in a lot of ways right just a great character one of the only people that I could stand in this movie 
Uh, so it worked well, right? Through the kind of the ep- kind of the through line through this epic movie is is the Manny character, which I appreciated, right? Definitely, as I said, many stressful moments, chaotic moments. There's also a lot of hilarious moments. There is some funny moments in this movie, which I really appreciated. And also moments where you see how, because of the chaotic nature of L.A. and Hollywood, you get to see these magical moments, right? These moments that somehow come together amidst the chaos and produce just these kind of beautiful points in time that are in it's it's almost like a flower growing out of the rubble from you know a post-apocalyptic wasteland like it's amazing that beauty can somehow grow in amidst this this disgusting chaos that surrounds it kind of crazy right Let's take a quick break right now to talk about, are you a fan of original artwork and live events? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor and the weekly live stream over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder. This ongoing series explores the endless possibilities of the human face through abstract ink paintings on paper, capturing unique expressions of emotion, mood, tone, and energy in just a few minimal features. Join me every Thursday at 4.20 Pacific Time as I paint live. Follow the Many Faces series and discover the endless possibilities of the human face. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the action and own a piece of original artwork by me, Ray Taylor. Head to youtube.com slash inspired disorder every Thursday to catch the live stream and visit inspireddisorder.com to browse and purchase the many faces artwork. And now let's get back to the show. And it shows how just impossible it is <laughs> to to make a movie and how anything how any anything could be achieved really uh, at all in that in that environment, let alone just like a beautiful moment but that anything would ever get completed and be worthy of like enjoyment on the other end of it is just it's just insane. And LA Hollywood very much a character in this movie, right? And I also loved in addition to Manny, I also love that Flea is in this movie, right? He's when Flea finally cuz I didn't you don't really know Manny is a big part of this movie at first. Because there's so many characters, you're meeting all these. It's just like insane. It's like so much, so overwhelming. The beginning of this movie, but once I saw Flea, I'm like, okay, at least there's one person in this movie that like I can kind of not want to give up on this movie. <laughs> you know, because it was a lot. It was a lot. So seeing Flea made it a little bit more bearable, and it's really like impressive. I would say. That this movie being three hours and about ten minutes of runtime, which is not short, which there are plenty of long movies with long runtimes that I do enjoy and justify their runtimes. And I would 100% say this movie, this is an epic story where you're seeing a lot of characters have arcs, including Hollywood has its own arc. And the massive kind of not only cast but like so many cuts so many shots like so much going on in every scene it is amazing that this movie in itself comes together let alone any other movie but this movie specifically it is like the complexity of this film is and how it all comes to it is kind of impressive especially by by the end, like how it's able to somehow hold this insanity together long enough uh, to come out the other end and to to enjoy it, right? Somehow, Damien Chazelle was able to craft like a great movie, I would say. Magical within itself. Magical within itself, right? You have, so you, some of the, you have Brad Pitt, who's like this aging, this, this actor who's, famous in the silent era and then kind of struggling when things change you have margot robbie who's this like rough around the edges starlet right powerhouse by far i would say one of my favorite performances from her she is 
amazing. Tr- all a lot of these characters, very tragic characters, but amazing. So great. And of course, as I said, Manny, right? The guy hustling, right, to make anything happen. Just trying to do his best in every situation, not only for himself, but also for film. And him finding success is kind of definitely something that if if Manny, the Manny character didn't exist, it would be very difficult for me to enjoy this movie as much as I did. But so many interesting characters, so many more, obviously. Those are kind of the main characters that you're kind of seeing their stories. But by far, also... One of the my favorite cameos from Tobey Maguire. Maybe one of my favorite roles of Tobey Maguire. I am not the biggest Tobey Maguire fan. I rewatched the Spider-Man in all of the Spider-Man movies recently. And in rewatch of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, it is kind of insane how bad of an actor he is. And I don't know if that's necessarily his fault or if it's just I really don't like... Um, God, I'm blanking on that director's name that did the Sam Raimi, right? I don't know what it is, but his performances in those movies on rewatch were painful, just painful to watch. Second one's okay, but like, oh my goodness. Uh, but this very creepy. He's kind of great in in this cameo that he's, you know, small part in this movie, but amazing. Amazing. So, a crazy movie. I do want to get into spoilers, talk about some specific stuff. But I think I've given enough about what I enjoyed about this movie being vague, not giving up too much about what's the specifics of this movie. So I want to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen it uh, and what I said sounds interesting, maybe you like, like if you like Boogie Nights, Right. If you liked, I mean, I would imagine if you like La La Land and Whiplash and then also Boogie Nights and kind of know going in, like I knew going in that it was going to have kind of a manic feel to it. Like a cocaine driven, like train off the rails kind of a thing. You know, I, I, at least I knew going in, it wasn't that overwhelming, but I don't know. I would recommend it. I ended up loving it. It is. By the end of it, 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 it's well worth the watch and, you know, in many ways flies by because it's there's so much and it's constantly moving. But I want to get into spoilers. So from the here on out, spoilers for Babylon, right? So within the four minutes, right, of this movie, you have an elephant not only shitting on people, but shitting all over the car- – like the camera is right up in the elephant's asshole – as just all of the waste comes out of it all over these actors like obviously I don't know how real that scene was but feels very real and feels like you're almost in it right if there if there was a scene in this movie to have 3d I mean it even like splashes on the camera the camera lens for this movie is covered as you're watching the, and it's just it's just insane and it's like boom 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 they're trying to get this elephant for a party and it's just like okay that's definitely sets a tone when you see within the first four minutes of a three hour and ten minute film you see an elephant just unloading its bowels all over people right as they're trying to drive this thing up the hill which is stressful in its in itself right just thinking about these old-timey cars trucks trying to drive up a steep incline with a giant elephant in the back of it is stressing me out enough right i'm like these cars are done for if they even make it like they are just whatever they were paid was not enough uh but already started and that's not even the most stressful part of the the beginning right i want to go through like i wrote down my exact thoughts right they get to a house party right and my thoughts during this house party right this movie is stressing me the fuck out right oh my god i hate everyone and everything another thought going through like i just like i'm stressed out i hate every everybody's an asshole everybody's acting like assholes it's just like this is not my vibe at all 
This is like so much, so big, right? Right, this, in my head, this is an introvert's hell. Like if I had to go to this house party, I would literally be in my hell. To be around that much energy of people, that many people with that kind of energy and just like, just like loud and like chaotic just would have been my hell on earth right and this movie is going to give me a panic attack those were the thoughts going through my head when we get to the the house party scene at the beginning of this movie where i'm like aside from seeing flea i was like i i'm i hate this movie i hate this movie so much i hate this movie this is so like painful. This is like torture. It is torturing me. And then finally, something I could like when feet when flea shows up. I'm like, okay, at least it's mildly tolerable, right? I I enjoy seeing flea in small parts in any movie. It's always just fun, right? And then you get to see like the the sets during the silent film era, which is just as chaotic. Right, seeing all of these sets right next to each other. Obviously, they're not recording audio, so there's no concern about who's yelling, what's going on. There's just like, it is just like this makeshift crazy factory of movies that is putting these films together, which is just like crazy to see. Like, never is like, obviously, it makes sense that they would set up like that to just churn out movies because all you're doing is video. Like, it's just the, the, the complexity of film back then was so different. So much, more, so much less work to do. Especially contrasted when they start using sound and to see the soundstage, which I thought, when it turns to the soundstage, like, one of my favorite moments of this movie where the characters in this movie are feeling the frustration that I had during the beginning of this movie where, like, every small sound, every small thing is, like, ruining this take of Margot Robbie's character just coming in and saying a line. I love, like, I was laughing. I was, it was hysterical when they go to this, the sound stage when audio all of a sudden becomes a, a major component, right? This movie, so many insane parties, right? The party where she has her dad, she wants her dad to fight a snake because he has this story where he fought a snake and then he decides not to. So she ends up doing it and then like gets like Margot Robbie's character, like in addition to her character as uh, in that comic book movie, um, birds of prey right she's great in that movie too she's great as that character in this movie that kind of like badass energy rough around the edges like doesn't give a shit right she is down to party harder than everybody she is like the broiest chick in this movie by far so kind of fun even though the parties are always so chaotic and like stressful that was definitely a fun scene where she gets got by that snake. Very funny. But I did like the Manny character, right? Like a lot of hustling, taking opportunities, seeing him. Like the the scene where he has to go get the replacement camera. And he gets back just in time for like the sunset. And you see how like the end of that day, how everything kind of comes together perfectly. Is just, it feels good because there's like massive chaos massive chaos and to see like this manny character kind of f fixing things along the way getting the the homeless people that are protesting to start working by like sh riding the horse shooting the gun in the air and then having to go get that replacement camera it's like okay this guy this guy gets stuff done man <clears throat> loved it um it's so much of this movie is like trying to domesticate feral animals right Everybody in Hollywood is this like feral, wild animal. And as the, the business of making movies evolves, it's like trying to domesticate these crazy people. Trying, especially the Margot Robbie character who plays uh, Nellie Leroy, right? It's just like, it's just crazy to think that you could domesticate these wild human beings that have never had to 
worry about boundaries that have been able to do whatever they want whenever they want however they want and never had to answer to any kind of repercussions for that right so great And this scene, especially when they're trying to make Natalie Leroy be this, like, elegant, you know, proper woman, right? And tr going to this party where there's this, like, bougie party where all these, like, rich people are. And her tr pretending to be, like, proper and ladylike and then eventually breaking. Amazing! She's stuffing her face and then throwing up on everybody. It was like I was like at no point did I enjoy her energy more was when that it was unleashed upon those fake rich people. Right. Because aside from the manic chaos that almost drove me to panic attacks, the only thing I dislike more is the proper bougie rich people where you have to act a certain way speak in a certain way only talk about certain things like you have to be such a fake person in order to exist in those worlds so to see her break and kind of just cut loose i really enjoyed as well Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention all, all Ray, Ray Taylor, Taylor show, show fans. fans. We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait, head on over to inspiredisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. Toby McGuire, when he shows up, like the creepiest he's ever been, so great. When he takes them to the dungeon, like, club, where it is, like, you know, because everything has to be cleaned up, right? Hollywood can't be as crazy as it used to be, as it was at the beginning of this movie, right? So a lot of the craziness goes underground, and there's this dungeon club, and it's just, like, what would have been all of the sideshow events at a circus at one point, including the geek Right. The person who eats live animals just straight. You have this giant muscle man who just eats a rat, a live rat. Absolutely disgusting. Like even watching it, I was like cringing. But just the lead up to that with Tobey Maguire's character was creepy. The fact that you have the tension of knowing when you, especially when you find out that the bag of money is all stage money. So you have that looming tension that's there as well as going into this deep, de dark dungeon where they keep going deeper and deeper to find the geek, the, the main event. It is just amazing. One, like I had already loved this movie by then, but then it was just another part of this movie that I absolutely right, loved as they're like descending into hell, seeing all of the craziest kind of sideshow stuff. Right. Everybody's just everybody in this movie is just riding it cr like crazy until the wheels fall off. Right. There is at no point any thought to what could happen or when to get off the ride. They're just going pedal to the floor until the machine just explodes in their face. Right. Seeing characters just completely get chewed up and spit out by L.A. Right. Just to survive in itself is success. If you just somehow come out the other end alive, then that is enough to consider yourself successful. Right. Just in all an epic L.A. story. Right. And the end where we see Manny after he escapes, comes back and he's back in L.A. with his family. Right. He got married has kids right like i already like this movie but to see manny when he comes back and he revisits the studio goes to watch 
singing in the rain in the theater and to see all of the moments and it's been a while since i've watched singing in the rain just watched it watched it for the first time a couple years ago and i had forgotten all of the different aspects of that movie because while manny's watching it all of the different aspects of that movie are things that he experienced in a boogie nights-esque reality of like insanity and ha- to see those all of those events which i didn't even didn't even put it together aside from the connection this movie has with singing in the rain in that they both are showing hollywood during the transition from silent films into talkies right at no point did i put together probably because i've only seen singing in the rain once it's been a couple years all of the different moments that happen in singing in the rain whether it's the cheesy dialogue that all of a sudden these actors are saying like brad pitt's character where he's literally being laughed at in theaters to the actress who can't speak proper which is nelly leroy's issue dealing with the microphone in singing in the rain like all of the issues that are happening in singing in the rain and to see manny seeing all of these moments from his life from this chaotic time in his life when he was coming up in in la finding success hustling in LA and to see all of those things all of these memories be reflected back at him in this movie and him crying absolutely made me love this movie I was like oh this is genius this is genius and I'm sure other people are like this is stupid it's just it's just singing in the rain I'm sure somebody who's watched singing in the rain a hundred times probably picked up on all of these similarities and all of the things and how in many ways this movie is the grounded, gritty, like Boogie Nights version of Singing in the Rain didn't. And when it when I did make that connection, it was amazing. <laughs> Let me tell you. Ignorance is bliss. Let me tell you. But I love that that scene where he's crying. Got me choked up a little bit as well. Right? seeing like the magic of films but also just the torture the absolute torture these people go through to make films right and uh you know great movie young people and hope all this kind of hope anything's possible right then it ends horribly for all of them with addiction and death suicide some people are end up escaping manny was able to escape but yeah, it's it's like it's tragic to see where so many of these people who clearly you could tell, right? You could kind of tell Brad Pitt's character probably not going to end well. For sure, Leroy's character was not going to end well. Uh, but it was nice to see Manny able to survive like one of the only people to survive the whole thing. Pretty great. So. It's a crazy movie. At first, I absolutely hated this movie. Right in the beginning, it was it just gave me nothing but stress and panic attacks. Right, just just like a train flying down the tracks, no brakes, just pieces falling off of the train left and right. Right, barely being held together. Barely like the idea that any part of this movie stays together and it it, as it's burrowing down the tracks it's just amazing right no hope for anyone on board right it is going everybody's going to crash and burn right it is not it is not a situation where there's a lot of survivors uh manny is maybe the only survivor in this manic train that's barreling down the tracks falling apart pieces just left and right right they, it's like the the scene in, in Back to the Future 3 where they put the, the nitro logs in there and then things are falling apart. He's got to get up to the speed before, you know, the track runs out. It's just, it's just crazy. It also shows, you know, the absurdity of life. Absolutely. The, the crazy ride that anybody could go on in their life the ups and downs that anybody can have in their life how like you have these memories of successful times you have these memories of exciting times and if you survive those times it's like almost a completely different life that you lived it's amazing uh 
and by the end of this movie i loved it right after going on that journey um and just being able to take some breaths slows down a bit has some fun it's not just a chaotic insane orgy party like the beginning and maybe it's all just stockholm syndrome right like this movie, I have like Stockholm Syndrome with this movie. Would not at all surprise me considering how it started, right? At first, I felt abused. I felt so abused by the beginning of this movie. But by the end, I sympathized with the film and its tragic characters, right? I don't know any more textbook definition of Stockholm Syndrome than to be massively abused and then over time being sympathetic with your abuser but for whatever reason that's what you could name this movie stockholm syndrome the movie right stockholm hollywood syndrome because by the end i loved it right just truly an epic film and it, it's kind of crazy it's 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 kind it's insane it's insane so I, I don't know, like by the end of this movie, I think I liked it more than most people that I heard talk about this movie. Um, either way, really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know if, you know, where it would have been if it would have been on my top list last year or not. Um, and I'm going to be doing, I think next week, I will be doing my top five, will be ranking my top five movies that have been nominated for Best Picture Oscars. And if this one, I think this one was, uh, but I will be ranking them, so we'll see if it makes a list, if it's even on the list at all. Uh, but I really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to see what Damien Giselle does next, because this is like, and kind of made me want to revisit La La Land, give it another shot, because I loved Whiplash, and I somehow just the, the abusive nature of it made me fall in love with this one too, I guess. Uh, but either way, I want to thank you, for tuning in to this episode of the Ray Taylor Show. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Babylon. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for more movie and TV show reviews. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or review or a ranking, I should say, on your favorite podcast platform or over on YouTube. If you're watching this, youtube.com slash inspired disorder. Until next time, enjoy the show. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.